everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today I want to talk about hummingbirds and their journey a lot of them are going to start taking as they start their migration south. Yes, a lot of people have told me that they've noticed that the hummingbirds that they have in their garden are not there anymore or their numbers are dropping down. Well, what's happening is as the hours become fewer and fewer, the daylight hours in the day, their hormones change and that's what triggers them to start to fly south. So they will leave and start their way down. Now, here where I live in California, we do end up with a lot of hummingbirds at some time, you know, during the month of September. And even, you know, now we've been noticing as we are in the beginning of September, the numbers on some days are like, I'm going to say easy 3,000. So they are coming through. We do have a lot of locals and they will be here all year, but they are migrating. What they're doing is they're leaving, let's say Canada and from up north and they're starting to travel down and they're heading to maybe southern parts of Mexico and they'll go as far as the Panama. It depends on where they're going. They have a different path. A lot of your species do have different paths and they are heading in different places. The reason they're leaving is they don't do well in the cold because it's very hard for them to find enough food. Remember, they need a lot of food to maintain that body weight of theirs. And if they don't get it, they will die. So that's why they migrate. They're smart. Believe you me, they know exactly what they're doing. A lot of your species, you know, like uh, the rufous and the black chinned that are out here in the United States, they'll migrate to more southern regions of the United States. So they may not leave the U.S., but they're going to stay in areas where they know there'll be an abundance of food, whether it's coming from hummingbird feeders that you put out, as well as the insects and flowers that do manage to flower all year, even during the cold weather. And some of your birds, the hummingbirds that are traveling, they can travel 18 to 22 hours nonstop, especially when they're going over the Gulf of Mexico. I, I find that amazing. Hummingbirds right now are fueling up. So they'll be even eating more than usual as they try to build their body weight up. They want to maintain a good body weight before they leave. So that's why you may see even more hummingbirds in some areas than you've seen before because what they're doing is they're trying to eat as much as they can to build themselves up. They need a lot of energy to do this long trip. And so that's why they'll be feeding a lot at feeders as well as in your garden. Now keep in mind, as you see them darting along in your garden, they are actually burning up energy just as they have to feed. That's why feeders are so important for them. If we can do it, you know, if you have the ability to get a feeder out there and you can help them out, it will really help them because even as they hunt for food, that burns up a lot of their energy. Um, remember, this is a bird that needs to eat one and a half to three times their body weight each day. And a hummingbird can visit as many as 200 flowers in 15 minutes. That's how fast they dart. And hopefully they're finding enough flowers because in a lot of areas like certain cities, you know, if you're in a drought, people are starting to go with more other plants that don't flower as well. They don't have the lawns that used to attract a lot of small insects. They have more cement around. So it's getting harder and harder for the hummingbirds to find the amount of food that they need. And remember, just because they travel to a flower and they look like they're poking in there getting it, it doesn't mean that there's any more pollen or nectar left in there if it's been visited by many other birds before they got there. So that's why I really try to encourage, if you can, people to get a hummingbird feeder out there for the birds. Just a simple hum hummingbird feeder. The only thing I say on that is make sure you get one that completely be taken apart. You know, the whole thing. There's a lot of really beautiful feeders out there and they're gorgeous and they're expensive, but they don't come apart. So they get mold inside. And then once the mold is in there, you know, it's very hard to clean out. It's just not worth it to have those feeders. I had a lot of those feeders. People used to give them to me and I've thrown those out. So it's, you know, I would say no, don't bother with it. Remember, all you need is white cane sugar, so it's one part it's one part sugar to four parts water. You don't have to boil the water when you're making it. I only boil the start of the water to get the sugar to start to melt, and then I mix in the rest of the cold water, tap water. 
any of the microorganisms that cause the fermentation it's is not coming from the water it's actually coming off the hummingbirds bills as they move around and go from area to area feeding on different things they're the ones that are bringing in the bacteria that will grow in there so it is good to you know uh, change it every couple days because of that if you've got hummingbirds there and you can refrigerate any of the leftover hummingbird food that you have not put out you know pour in what you need in the feeder you don't have to fill the feeders but you can put it in the refrigerator for up to two weeks so when the hummingbirds start to migrate what they're doing is they're starting some of them as early as july it depends on you know where they are how far up north they are and the rest of them will be out of there if they're not a local resident they'll be out of there by september sometime in september and then they'll take their trip down south and go as far as they are planning on going a lot of them go a lot of different places so it just depends on where they're going but they do have to move to a warmer area remember it's all about food that's basically what it is it's all about where they can find enough food and they have a great memory so while they were doing their trip up north they know where they have stopped and where there was nectar and feeders and flowers so they will remember that and they'll make that trip generally in the same area hoping to find the same feeders the same gardens and that's why you see them and then sometimes you don't and then you see them again because they're coming back they know as far as how long you should keep your hummingbird feeders out if you're more in the northern states i would keep them out until the weather drops down and gets really cold because they still could be around you may not see them a lot of people tell me oh i put it out there i don't see them you'd be surprised if they're really shy and they don't know you they may not come anywhere near that feeder when you're around the only way you may see them is out of a window but again they're so fast they literally can go to a hummingbird feeder and feed in seconds uh, and take off so keep the feeders out if you've seen them during the spring and summer keep it out until the weather cools just to be sure that none of them are going to starve in the, that area because they may still be coming back to that feeder and looking around and eating when you're not watching. So I would keep it out until the weather is cool. So I'll keep you updated on the hummingbirds. Like I said, the other day I made like three gallons. It was the amazing how many hummingbirds we had come through here. I know a lot of them are locals now. They live in this area some of them will go for miles and then come back in the evening because they know that there's always food here yes we do not vacation gary and i we live here to make sure these birds have enough food all of them i haven't had a vacation in over 20 years and the last vacation i went on it was literally go in the morning go do something and come back late afternoon that's the way we are because we want to make sure everything is is good and there's really it's really hard to get somebody to do all that so it's just something thank goodness we both enjoy this so much that it is perfectly fine with us we make sure all the feeders are completely topped up first thing in the morning as the sun is coming up and that includes seeds as well for the other seed eating residents and then we make sure all the water fountains are cleaned out we just take a hose and we flush it out and we make sure the water for them is really nice and clean i also flush during the day on hot days to make sure it stays clean because remember the hummingbirds are drinking out of the bird baths and different fountains that we have out too but the food is what is so important first thing in the morning as the sun is coming out those hummingbirds are looking for a feeder it's easier yes but you know we do the same thing we're going to find what's easier first so it's easier for them to get up from a long night's sleep get their body going by coming to a feeder filling up there and then taking off i have watched them go across the canyon they can go miles you can see them just take off the little tiny things just slowly disappear into the sky and then all of a sudden that little dot is gone and they know that no matter how many miles they leave to go travel in other cities that if they did not find enough insects enough pollen enough nectar they can come back here and they do before the sun goes down and literally we thought it was hundreds but it's actually thousands of hummingbirds come back to the feeders they feed and then they can roost in the trees here and they may go back uh, quite a few miles away to roost it's hard to say i don't know where they roost they roost wherever they want to in the trees but they know there's food here here's the thing once you start feeding hummingbirds 
you must make sure the theaters are full. Well, I shouldn't say full, but have food in them. That's the most important thing. So if you know you've got hummingbirds, you want to make sure that you've got food out all the time during the day. If you don't and you let them run dry, they will leave looking for food. They have to. They cannot sit around and wait to see if you're going to fill the feeder. Because in the time they'd be sitting around, if the sun drops down, they won't make it through the night and they would die. So the thing is, if you are feeding hummingbirds and you see quite a few, you have four, five, 20, it doesn't matter. At that point, I would definitely have at least two feeders out. Because if the one runs out and they're feeding off the one and they can't find any food, and I'm not talking about them perishing, I'm talking about them leaving. And if they leave and they go half a mile down the hill, let's say, or a block, and they find somebody's got hummingbird feeders out, they'll feed from those hummingbirds that night, and there will be a chance that they will never return to your property again. Because once they find food and they know that this is something that, you know, is making them survive, it's there, they won't come back. You know when they'll come back? When the neighbor's food that they went to runs out. Then they'll come back, they'll remember, well, wait a minute, we used to go down there, and they'll go check it out. But once they find another food source and they're happy with the food source and there's places for them to go into the trees and roosts and they've got water out and maybe they've got insects and maybe they have flowers too, they'll stay there. And that's why sometimes people have said, we had a whole bunch and they disappeared. Well, if you're gone during the day and that one, and you have, let's say, one feeder out and it's run out and they've come back and they had to leave somewhere else and found another food source, they won't come back. So here we keep dozens. We have dozens of feeders, um, and there is, there's always food in at least some of the feeders, no matter what. Even if I get busy, I know there's always food out there somewhere, but there are a lot of hummingbirds that are creatures of habit, just like people, and they want their feeder full. So it's so funny. So they will find me in the garden, and they will dive bomb me. They'll zip around my, my head. They'll, it seems like a bumblebee is attacking me, and what it is is there's a feeder that they like feeding out of and they prefer that one to have food in it. And so I have to go back and make sure that feeder is cleaned out and refilled. They're funny little guys. They won't leave because they know there's still a food source. There's other hummingbird feeders out there. But the point is they like that hummingbird feeder and they want me to fill that one. So that's why I'm saying if you have a bunch of hummingbirds, just make sure you've got more than one feeder up. So this way you can, you know, if you have to, you fill them and hopefully at least one of them still has food. So they'll hang around, use that feeder until their favorite feeder is full. It's so funny here. I have so many hummingbird feeders, uh, all different styles. I put one out once that looked like a masonry jar. It was an actual hummingbird feeder and they wouldn't use it. I don't know why they didn't like it. So I put that one away right now. But I've made these hummingbird feeders out of plastic ice cream containers and I wanted to pull them in but it's their favorite feeders if I pull them in they zip around me they look for them there's something about certain feeders and these plastic containers I made they they like them is what it is and they sit on the edge and it must be comfortable they can see all around them it's not like a round feeder that's hanging and they can't see what's in, on the other side and is it one of their enemies they don't like that's feeding on the other side because they can see and it's flat, they don't fight. You could have a dozen hummingbirds feeding out of this funny little ice cream container and they're all happy and they're all waiting, um, you know, in line. There'll be other ones waiting. As one leaves, another one comes. They just prefer that. So it's funny what hummingbirds like. You try different things, they're all different. Somebody once asked me, how did they know there was food in there? You know, to be honest on that, these hummingbirds know me so well that when I walk outside, they look to see what I've got. They have never tried to take a drink out of a glass or anything in my hand. But if I put something out and I point to it and they're flying around me and I kind of point to the holes, they will come down and check it out and they'll taste it. And if it's got what they are looking for and they know what they're looking for, they'll drink out of it. So anyways, they are migrating now. It is the month of September. They are doing their thing. They are going down south to warmer areas. You know, like some of you that go from New York to Florida to stay warm. Well, they have to stay warm. But they're not just staying warm. Their main thing is 
the food source. They have to follow the food source. They do not hibernate. So wherever they're getting their food is, you know, where they have to go and where they have to be. Some of these birds are going to a thousand miles to get to where they need to be. And they need those small insects, those gnats or even ants, ants and flowers. So whatever they need, they know where to go. And, you know, they'll go with their parents. I shouldn't say parents because dad has nothing to do with raising the babies. They'll go with mom. Mom will bring them to the feeder. If you've got a feeder up, and they've raised babies in your yard, she'll bring them to the feeder. And sometimes if you've got a regular hummingbird feeder, she will protect that feeder and she will feed out of it. And then once her babies are big enough, she'll bring her babies back to feed out of it. And then what we've had here is she's gone back and had two more babies. So now you've got five birds feeding out of it because she'll bring, there's two babies per nest usually. So she'll bring the first two, the second two to feed out of it. And she'll be feeding out of it. And then all of a sudden she'll have two more babies because they tend to have three clutches here. And then you've got seven birds feeding out of it. It's so funny. And what it is, it's, it's family. It's mom with her babies. And I do believe that when those babies have babies, even the following year, they all happily share the feeder. They recognize each other. So that's why, you know, sometimes you have to have more than one feeder up because it might be a family, a mother with all her babies, and they're all feeding off of one feeder. So that's why you may have to have a second feeder or a third or a fourth. You know, we I used to go buy uh, my sugar in, what, two-pound packages, five-pound packages? No, it was two, and then I was buying four pounds. It was five. They reduced it to four. Oh, no, that's a day. Uh, no, now I buy it in 25-pound sacks, granulated white sugar, cane sugar. But you know what? It works. They're happy. The numbers have gone into the thousands. You know the old saying, be careful what you wish for? Well, I'm happy. So with that, just want to let you know they are moving. Keep those feeders out. If you are up north until you know 100% that the hummingbirds have moved out for now, hopefully they'll be back, you know, depending on the weather. They know the weather better th than us, so they could come back in, you know, maybe April. If we have really good weather, they could be back in March. But you'll see them. You'll know. They'll start hanging around. You'll get an idea. And um, like I said, keep those out. And then if you are in more of the southern part of the U.S., keep those feeders out because if you've got them out as they're traveling through and they feel that it's a good place, they may just stay all winter, especially if there's some flowers and some other insects they can find in that area, then they'll stay and you'll have hummingbirds all winter. We have hummingbirds here all winter. So with that, I hope I gave you an update on their migration. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.